In today's show, we're going to talk about Power Apps performance optimization. So we're going to use Monitor and look at Patch and talk about different ways of running patches and talk about the performance implications of all of them. So we're going to talk about single uploads, bulk uploads. We're also going to make sure we talk about both SharePoint, Dataverse, and SQL, all as data sources, and understand, you know, are there any nuances between the different ones, which there are. So, but first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today, Power Apps performance optimization, right? Which is a giant topic we could do months, years, oodles of content on. So what we're going to do today, though, is we're going to focus on really just editing data, right? So using patch, we're going to talk about some different ways that you can do patch, right? There's four or five different ways we talk about the patch syntax, and we want to understand does it affect performance at all. And then we're also going to talk a little bit about for all and collect and the difference there. And uh, we're going to use monitor to prove what I'm saying is true, right? Because that's what we want to do. I, that's what set me down this road was I wanted to prove that the way that I understood that these different syntaxes were you know, working was happening. So we're going to understand monitor. So we're going to do, do a little bit of a dive into monitor and how that can help you guys understand this as well. Um, also, I think it's just interesting to note, like I learned two or three new things kind of doing this, right? There's just, and there were a couple of them, I, or one of, at least one of them I knew, but I didn't really put it into practice because I didn't understand. So now I understand it. So anyway, so there's just a lot of little, little things to take away from this. And of course, we're going to primarily start with using SharePoint as my data source because my brain always starts at SharePoint. But then I went and kind of fact checked all of this against Dataverse as a data source and SQL. And there's actually a couple small differences when you're using Dataverse as a data source. So we're going to kind of point those out as well. All right, whatever. It's enough of the blah, blah, blah. Switch over to my desktop and take a look. Here on the desktop, the first thing I want to do is just show you the data sources real quick. So from a data source perspective, right here, data. So I've got my SharePoint list. Like I said, we'll do most of the demos from here. Uh, because that's where I started. But then we also have a Dataverse table and a SQL table. And they're all slightly different, but it doesn't matter because like, we're not worried about what we're patching. It's just worried about the number of network calls that are happening, really, is what we're after. So, so those are the pieces that we're going to pull in here. Uh, so you could recreate these demos with any list out there, right? That's, I think, the key message. So the one that kind of got me started was I did a video last week and at the end of the video, like not even thinking about it, I just quickly use this syntax to make a final point in that video, right? So patch my SharePoint list. And then here I had a lookup to the SharePoint list, you know, for ID four, right? It's Chewy's record and set his age to five. And so I did this and it was interesting, you know, or like I wasn't even thinking about it, but it worked. It did what I needed. I moved on. And so then someone said, Hey, you know, that, is not ideal, right? Like that's bad performance practice because that forces the server to do the lookup. I'm like, that doesn't sound right, but okay, I, you know, I, I'm always open for feedback. And so the idea was that you should do something like this. You should use the with uh, function right here. So with, and then create that variable called var record, you know, doing the lookup here, and then just patch employees var record and do that. And so that'll get the same, right? That and this do the same thing, right? My brain knows that for sure. But the way the discussion was going was it was like this was more performant than the other way I just showed you. That set off my spidey sense, right? My, my tingles, my eh, something's wrong here. And so I set out to understand if that was the case. I guess I should point out if you aren't familiar with with, I'll put a video link up there so you should understand with. With is very important for performance. But one of the things that we run into a lot with with is that people think that it solves all the problems, right? Myths, myths about widths. Well, that was almost the name of this video. But the idea, you know, is because sometimes with will suppress things like delegation warnings, people think that with is delegable, but it's not. It, it doesn't break any of the rules of power apps. It just gives you a cleaner way sometimes to write your syntax to avoid redundant calls. Right? With has a lot of great uses. It's one of my top three favorite functions in power apps. But in this scenario, it's really just fetching data, storing it here, and then doing the patch. This is actually going to do the same thing. So, so to prove that, what I did, so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go right here under Tools, and we're going to open up Monitor. So we're going to say Open Monitor. This is going to open a new browser shell. Boom. 
our browser window, not shell. <laughs> and this is gonna give us like feedback of all the things that we are doing over in our app. So we can see all the network calls, we can better understand what is happening. And in case of me, where I'm trying to pr prove they both do the same stuff, this is pretty ideal. So we're gonna do this. So now what I wanna do here is we want to, you know, we've got monitor running, we're gonna go into play mode here, and we're gonna click on patch lookup. So what happens is obviously it's gonna patch my record, yay. But if we go over here, we can actually see from the network perspective what happened. So the user, user action, did a select, that means they clicked, and would they click the button lookup patch, right? So they clicked the button, and then it did three calls to the network, right? These calls to the network, these are the, the expense in your apps a lot of times, right? Three calls out to the network, and you can see that first, it did a get rows. Well, Shane, what rows did it get? Fair enough. Click on this, and you'll be able to see that, look, there's the formula data, so that's the, the what ran. We don't care about that, we know what ran. But if you look at the data, you're gonna, you can go through this, and we're not gonna spend a lot of time in this, but if you are willing, you can read through this and really start to understand, right? Like you can see that it's using the SharePoint Online API. And if we go down here, you can see that the URL that it hit, it actually hit that API, and it's like, hey, go to this URL, hit the tables, hit the table with this GUID, which is a GUID for employees, call the items endpoint, and then filter where ID equals four, which we know is the lookup that we just did, and top one. So SharePoint actually doesn't understand lookup, right? Power Apps just translate lookup into a filter that requests one record. Did you know that? Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. Is it really important? No, but understanding more of the guts is what makes you guys better at Power Apps. That's why we talk, stop and talk about this for a second. So then here you can see a whole bunch of the, the stuff that it got, right? Like so, all the things, and then down here is the response, and in here you should see, you know, it pulled back Chewy's whole record, right? So this was the lookup. So then it did this get rows count, and if we kind of exp uh, expand this, requested row, one row, received one row. Perfect, so it's kind of its, its way of saying, all right, I got what I wanted, cool. And then the patch row, same thing, right? There's the formula data, we know what that is, we wrote that, but in the data section here, you can see it once again, hitting that API. And look, this time it hit the URL, blah, 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 blah. So the same thing, items four. So that's how it knew to get the fourth record, Chewy's ID. And it did a method of patch. So that's a, you know, a API concept. Basically it's saying, hey, push these changes over the top. And then down here, you can see what changes did it push? It just pushed the age as five, right? Remember your code? Let's just go back here and prove our code, show our code again. So patch the fourth record, right? We did the lookup to find that record, but that's what we wanted. And then patch the field age of five. So, so we can see all of that in monitor. So that's kind of cool, right? Like, there's a lot more you can learn from digging in there, scratching and pawing. But when you guys are trying to better understand what's happening, sometimes popping open monitor is a great way to prove what you think is happening is happening or prove it's not happening. So that's one piece of this, right? So, so there you can see. You press the button, three network calls, and that was by using this patch lookup. So then the one that they told me to use with width because they said that's a better performance practice, let's press it, press the button, go back over here to monitor, and what do we got? We selected button with patch, right? So right here, oh, I didn't mean to actually click that, but there you go, we selected that. It did a get rows, guess what it did? It did that lookup, filter for one, it validated, it requested one, it got one, and then it patched the row. So what does that tell you, right? This tells you that whether you write the code or write the code, write the formula, I hate when I say code, write the formula this way or this way, they both do the same exact thing. Literally, the same thing. Step for step, 100% the same. So performance is the same. Now, when you're testing, you could come over here and be like, well, Shane, let's see. So this one took... 223 milliseconds, this one took 216 milliseconds, that one was faster. That was dumb luck, right? When you're talking about a seven millisecond difference, that was dumb luck. And I promise we do it again, the numbers will be different, and I've done it enough to see that sometimes the patch weighs faster, sometimes the width weighs faster. It doesn't actually matter, right? It's, it's dumb network you know, speed at that point. So these both are the same speed. And more importantly, they both call three the network three times, right? So 
there you go. So that was my first one, right? It was with did not magically make this any better. Now, I also was just curious. Um, so I then went here and said, well, what if I set a variable to Chewy's record and then we patch the variable? Fair enough. So set the variable, patch Chewy. What do you expect to see over here? Hopefully you know. So set the variable, did the get rows and the get row count, right? So it did that half and then it patched the row. So it made three network calls as well. Now, now that's not to say like, if you already have the variable saved, then please use it, right? But in this case, I have to fetch the variable because I don't have it. So that's where I'm having, you know, the same performance, right? Because I had to go get the data with this and do this. But like, you know, if this was patch employees gallery.selected, that's awesome, right? Because gallery.selected is already pulled in. It doesn't have to go to the network to get that. So, so I don't want you to feel like these are like, me telling you to do it these specific ways that is not my goal here. My goal is for you to understand what happens when you press buttons and you tell patch to go do its thing. Okay. Now as part of playing with this though, I did find a better way, right? For this particular scenario. So, cause what's the scenario here, right? The scenario here is I want to patch Chewy's record. I don't, it's, it's not dynamic. I'm not letting them choose the record. I literally just want to patch Chewy's record and change his age which, you know, sometimes you just want to patch a specific record all the time. So if that is the case, you ready for the one that is better? There is one that is better. So this syntax works as well. And probably most of you did not know this patch data source ID four, right? So I'm not doing a lookup. I'm, what do we see? You see the curly brackets that's creating a record and that's just creating a record with the ID of four it turns out that is all that the data source needs, right? That's all patch needs to know what is the primary key of the record you want to change. So ID of four, set the age to nine. So if we go over here, right, we got monitor, let's clear out all these other results just to make our lives easier. We go here, let's press patch ID. And boop, there you go, look at that. It did everything in one call. It does not have to do the lookup. So Shane, how did it work? I don't know, right? So we know all select does is runs the function. Eh, that's not helpful, but the patch. So the formula data is still the same. That's not new, but look at the data here. What happened if you go look at the URL that they're patching, they just knew, right? So power app is just magical and smart. And it is said, Oh, your primary key is four. This URL needs the primary key of four. And it just bolted it in there. So we didn't actually have to go get Chewy's whole record to patch Chewy's record. So now this could have ramifications if you were trying to, um, you know, patch something and you need a default or you're creating new, like, once again, this is not the be all end all, but in scenarios where this makes sense for you, where you're trying just to update a single record, this could be the answer. And maybe you're not just trying to write it here, but I know by doing code reviews with a lot of you, you're carrying around a variable called, you know, var primary key or var record dot ID, right? There's nothing stopping you from, what do we call the variable here? Var, var employee one, right? There is nothing stopping me from going right here and saying var employee one dot ID, right? Because Power Apps just wants what Power Apps wants. It wants an ID here, that returns a four, that'll return a four. And so this would work exactly the same way. So if you already have the ID, you don't have to necessarily do the lookup, right? Or not necessarily, you don't need to go redo the lookup in order to patch the record because you already had it because you were using that for other places inside your app, right? Remember, so these aren't concrete, these aren't concrete like things I want you guys doing. These are concepts I want you to understand and apply as they make sense for you. Don't yell at me when, if you're not applying the concept, you're just trying to recreate the exact steps. I told you we would talk about other data sources. So let's take a moment here. So like that was patching. Um, and let's just change this back to four because that's what I originally had. So that's uh, SharePoint. So what if I was doing it on uh, SQL? So if we just click on go to SQL. So if we look over here in SQL, it's the same syntax, right? Because in my SQL table, I made the ID column my primary key. So ID one. And if we just go here and then press this, you're going to see in this case, right? There's our SQL patch row. And if we go right here to data, so it's hitting a different API, but it's the API that is assigned to that specific or to SQL. 
and it's just once again doing a patch to items one and then the API is running the SQL to do all this stuff. So there you go. Same type of, you know, lovely uh, behavior. So SQL would do that same type of, you know, uh, quick patch. And if we go to Dataverse, that one's a little bit different. Um, so if we go here to patch ID, so for the, the Dataverse side, um, remember they use a primary key, so it's your table name. So Chewy Trackers is my Dataverse table. Then that means Chewy Tracker is my unique identifier column, and that is a GUID. So I had to go get the GUID for that and put that in the GUID function like that. But then if we do this, and now if we press patch by ID here, it should update Dataverse. And now if we go over here to monitor, and then we look at patch row for this one. Make sure that's the data, yep. And so then down here, you're gonna see that it's running the patch and it's hitting um, that URL and it's patching in the data. Um, there's the GUID right there. So, so all of that, right? And you don't have to understand all that, but I wanted you guys to have the opportunity to see that level of detail as you start to explore this tool a little bit more. Okay, so that's the first piece of it. Let's go right to SharePoint. So then now we got into a conversation about bulk updates, right? And so in the case of bulk updates, I had a pretty good understanding of this one. I'd kind of poked around in this before, but if you've watched enough of my videos, you know that my favorite way to do like a bulk update is I like to for all, right? So for all through a collection, I'm using the as uh, operator to you know, set that as data, and I'm just saying patch employees, ID, boom, 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 right? So that is a way to you know uh, do it efficiently, but that is going to loop through and is going to patch all of those, all right? So if I, for example, click on this button for create new collection, and then we'll go over here, let's wipe out all this. And if I press for all patch, what we're going to see in monitor, well, we know it's gonna take a few seconds, right? Like I think I'm creating like 10 records, so it takes a moment. But if you go over here, you're gonna see that, look, for every one of those, it did a call, right? And that's important to understand. With for all, it loops through the whole collection. There was 10 records in the collection, it did 10 loops, and it pushed each one. What's really important to understand as well, though, is that those transactions happen one after another. So the first create row ran, it took 365 milliseconds, and so then look, this next one started roughly 365 milliseconds after that. So that ran for 1.7, or 174, so this ran, and then this one took, um, well, it got its duration wrong. It didn't really take that long, but it's pretending like it did. Um, but so that one, but so you notice that all of these numbers are sequential and they're all roughly 200-ish seconds apart, 200 milliseconds. So that's important that they go one, two, three, four, five. They just do them in order, okay? So yes, it works. Yes, I got all the data out there. It created my 10 new rows, but it took a little bit longer. If I was creating 100 rows, right, it would have taken 10 times, right, because there have been 10 times rows, and they all happen one at a time. They don't happen all at once. They happen one at a time, sequentially. Once again, another one of those things that someone told me once upon a time, like, well, if you use collect your data source and then that collection, this will create those 10 new rows, but it will do it faster because it'll do it all, and it'll just push the whole collection and do it at once. Eh -eh. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna check that out because I don't think they're right. We go here, we press collect data source. Well, we can tell it's a little slow there. And then finally, if we go over here and look, we're gonna see that in reality, every 200-ish milliseconds, another one got created because they all take roughly 200 milliseconds to create, right? Like boom, 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 boom. So 10 took that long, 100 would take 10 times longer, right? Because we are doing them one at a time, waiting on the first one to get created, then we're creating the next one, then we're creating the next one, then we're creating the next one. So neither one of those, so whether you're doing it this way for all or doing it this way, both of them have the same performance characteristics. They both behave exactly the same, creating the data one at a time. Slight, slight side note, this is true if we are talking about SharePoint or SQL. Dataverse, has magical powers, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but Dataverse handles that one differently. But in the case of SharePoint or SQL, these two code blocks take basically the same amount of time. You could argue that you would rather write it this way because it is less to write, that's fair. I prefer to write like this because this is how my brain works. 
You do you. So that brings me to the last thing I want you to understand. Oh, another thing, right? For all patch, this will work for an existing data source. Um, collect to data source um, only does new records, right? Collect does not update existing records. So that is one nuance between those two. Anyway, so I'm like, all right, I got it. My head dropped around all this. I was pretty close to make the video. And then I was having a, cha a, cha a chat with um, Penn Warner and Matthew Devaney, or Devaney, I don't know, Matthew, I just said your name wrong, I apologize, whatever, shoot me. Anyway, two people I know from tw the Twitterverse quite well, um, you know, and uh, both make uh, some content out there to help the world. Anyway, uh, so Matthew actually had a blog post a while back where he had discovered another method to do this faster, right? Because he was not a fan of for all, he's like, this is thing so slow, especially in large data sets, truth. And so what he found out was that you can do this syntax. I did not know this existed. This is a not documented syntax and we, I'm going to assume it's supported because it works. I also found out that when I was showing it to my internal team here at Power Apps 911 that Juan has been using this for years. I was like, well, why don't you tell me? Um, but anyway, so another syntax you can use is patch, data source, and then a collection. Ready for some magic? Watch this. I go here, all right, we'll clear out monitor again. That finished really fast. Why'd that finish so fast? Because if you look over here, notice that the 10 calls are not 200-ish milliseconds apart. They basically are as fast as Power Apps could spit them out. So when you use this particular syntax, it does bulk create them. It created them all at the same time instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is so much faster. So I'll put a link down in the description to uh, Matthew's blog post on the topic. Like he's, you know, wrote it, wrote it all kind of up how it all works um, and give you a way to like recreate all that. But I, I just thought that was super interesting um, that this method that, you know, like I said, it's not documented, doesn't exist as far as the world concerns, this works. And so we played with this more, right? Uh, so uh, me and Allison on my team were playing with this yesterday. And basically what happens here is if Cole employees, if there is an ID on the record, so like if you pull in the collection and from an existing data source, so it's got, you know, Chewy's record and the ID of four, then it knows to patch. If you pull in the collection and it has um, any records where they are blank, then it will, uh, where the ID is blank, then it will create those as new. Like it understood that logic itself. And we can kind of create that. So if I say create edit collection here, which all this is doing is creating me a collection. Oh, so this one actually does what I wanted. Um, so you're gonna see that if we look at this collection, I guess I left this code in here. So what we really care about is the ID column. So the ID column here. So ID one, two, three, blah, 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 blah. Right, so those are the ones, like there's Chewy, right? he's ID four. If we go to the bottom, I did a collect to bolt on a uh, record with an ID of zero. So if I leave this, this is going to fail. So we're not even gonna bother doing it. We'll, re we'll change this. But if I get rid of ID, so if I just delete that out. So we're gonna press the button again. And so then now if we look at the collection, and this, is, this was cool stuff to me. So let's find the ID column again. Um, so there's our one, there's our four, all the way to the bottom. So there is the um, the one with ID blank, but the title for this one is Allison right there. So now if we run our patch with collection, so let's go over here, let's clear monitor, let's press this button. And at this point it's probably creating a hundred rows. I probably need to clean up my data source. But if we look through here, not only is it doing patch rows, but it's doing a create row, right? It's just funny, it happened right there. So it created Allison's row, so it knew that because there was no ID for hers, that it needed to do a post and create. But for all those other rows, it is going to do, 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 do. So that's patching record 180. That's pretty amazing. So this is kind of a cool trick, um, you know, 
I, I don't know. It's, it's not documented. I, I'll be honest, I emailed Microsoft to get their opinion on me showing you this and they didn't respond. They're busy people. I don't blame them for not responding. Um, but uh, I guess if they respond and tell me it's a terrible idea, look up top. If there's, I'll, put a, I'll put a little warning like up at the top, um, right? like one of those little fly out things if uh, they come back and say, no, I'm not going to edit the video. So, Or I can't edit the video, whatever. Okay, so all of this works great for SharePoint. Right? And remember, SharePoint and SQL behave 100% the same for all of these rules. The one nuance um, that I wanted to point out is on the Dataverse side. So on Dataverse, this does exactly the same thing as SharePoint does. Everything happens one, 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 one. This on the Dataverse side will behave exactly like this from the standpoint of creating new records. So they will. this will create all your new records, but it'll do them all at the same time instead of sequentially one after another. So it's really weird that Collect behaves different when Dataverse is the data source, but since I discovered that, I wanted to share that with you. And then the last thing, I know this video has gotten to be super long. I apologize, but hopefully you're eating this up because this is, this is like days and days and weeks, months, years of research for me to get this uh, down to a half hour video for you. But the other thing that I want you to understand is that Monitor can be a little confusing sometimes. But if, if you think about it, you can usually understand what's going on. So we're going to go over here and we're going to patch our lookup, right? And so we know that by pressing that button, it updated Chewy's record and it set its age to five. And if we go look at monitor, we saw the activity we expected, right? User clicked it and there are three network calls, okay? Now, if I'm not paying attention as I was switching back and forth trying to understand things, I'm gonna hit play, I'm gonna press this same button again, right? 10 seconds, 30 seconds later, whatever this is. Press the button again. Go back over here. This confuses you, okay? So there's a select, so this is, we know where it started. Um, and then it did the get rows, so it went and fetched the record, right? This is that whole filter top equals one. Yep, perfect. But then, and it confirmed it got the one and the one, but it didn't patch the row. Why? The reason why is Power Apps understood. It's like, hey, you're telling me to set the age to five. The age is already five. I don't need to do that. So it does an error, right? There's no error over here. There's no warning. There's no nothing. It just ignored patching there. So this can be confusing when you're doing a lot of these types of tests because Power Apps is trying to be smart. Remember, Power Apps is always trying to think for us, right? It's trying to avoid us doing stupid stuff. Thank you, Power Apps. And the idea here is that it said, oh, that value is already that. Why would I change it? So it didn't change it. And I think this is like genius of Power Apps, but it's also very confusing when you guys are troubleshooting or you're trying to use Monitor, you're trying to understand what's going on. You're like, why didn't that happen? Because it didn't need to happen. So try not to be like me. Try not to get angry at Power Apps when those types of scenarios come up and try to understand why it ignored you there. Um, the other thing that I will warn you a little bit about with um, Monitor is that sometimes... It's gotten better, but sometimes monitor doesn't monitor everything. It misses. It, it's gotten a lot better at it, but I still like running through some of these tests. Like I knew things that it needed to go. That I knew it was doing stuff, but it wasn't showing up in monitor, like data refreshes and things like that. So just sometimes be a little skeptical. Maybe try it again if it's not doing what you think it should do. But it's not to say don't use monitor. I like monitor. It's very handy but just know sometimes it hides things from you. Now, speaking of it hiding things from you, could go up here to options and source filter and change this to detailed. You probably don't wanna do that. Like if we clear this data out now, let's just go press one of these buttons. We'll press the with patch. Like it created 20, pressing that button ended up with 26 things in monitor. There's too much going on here. And most of this I don't care about, right? All this telemetry stuff is just, Microsoft's data back to themselves. So they know what's going on with the platform. It's healthy, all that stuff. Oh, so what, 28. So the telemetry and the log level just happen again while I was sitting here talking to you, right? If we sit here for like 10 more seconds, it'll happen again or 15 seconds. I forget how often it happens. But that's just kind of the phone homey stuff. So there's a lot of extra stuff in here, but I don't think you want this. I would leave this off unless you like know that there's something that's not showing up that you really want to show here. So leave this at default. 
The row density, this to me just changes the height of the rows. I don't understand why that's an option. Just make them small. So there's a lot more that monitor can do than we're talking about here. But those were a couple of quick ones I wanted to push on you on the way. All right, that's enough for today. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully this gets your brain turning and thinking and doing because there's a lot going on here. But understanding that A, width is not a miracle worker. It doesn't do magic. So please don't think it does magic. B, there are better ways to patch more likely than what you're doing today. And C, monitors always gets the final statement on whether or not what you think is happening is happening. Those are what the takeaways are. And remember, if you enjoy these types of nerdy conversations and understanding, you want to really be better at understanding the, the nuts and the bolts, right? Training.powerapps911.com. I run live classes, on-demand classes, but you know those classes are different from these videos because videos are kind of like one locked up little concept, right? Whereas like my live class is a five-day conversation between me and the students on all of the nuance, trying to help people understand, right? My whole goal of those training classes is to, you know, teach a person a fish mentality. I want you to understand why it works, not just how it works. So, all right. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Hey, me again. Before you go, click on the subscribe button, right? Join the list of 100,000 plus people that have subscribed already. Or if you need any help, right? Check us out at Power Apps 91. We do big projects, little projects. We do training. We do everything and we can help you. Or if you want to see more videos, you probably do, then just click on the playlist above. Cool? Thanks and have a great day.